Okay, so here's my thought. Lastly, but not lastly, um, one of the things which I've often found interesting is the fact that of how science fiction gets closer to science fact all the time. Um, airplanes were at one point actually uh, considered uh, technologically impossible. There is a site online where uh, there is actually a quote that some uh, prominent scientists at the time when the Wright brothers did their first flight um, rejected the idea out of hand, saying nobody, you know, fly, uh, heavier than air machines are impossible, so this must be a fraud. Um, well, now we know that not to be true. Um, another example of uh, at the time period was a guy who actually assaulted uh, and discredited Thomas Edison uh, when he invented the phonograph by saying, and I quote, I will not be taken in by your ventriloquist. The point is, is that science fiction and science, you know, true scientific uh, you know, evolution and, uh, and creativity has allowed for technological application over time and time again. And the thing is that, you know, my final thoughts on this is that, you know, we have had religion for as long as we, uh, as we can remember. But the problem is, though, is that I don't think, and I'm going to disagree with a large chunk of the atheist community here. You know, I, I still consider myself agnostic, but I'm going to disagree with a large chunk of you guys. I don't think religion was an actively attempt to control people, uh, you know, and try to, uh, try to con uh, convert them initially. What I think happened, and this is what I strongly suspect, is that science fiction, uh, I think that the beginnings of religion, the be you know, what started religion off in the very first place, was extrapolation based on basic discoveries that were being seen. The, uh, for example, the uh, the Mayans, uh, the Mayans blur, uh, mer merged religion and uh, and science very effectively. Um, matter of fact, uh, quite um, the priests of both Incan and Mayan uh, traditions were able to predict when solar eclipses would happen, and um, you know, and they. And if anything, uh, a few of those priests took advantage of it and then tried to uh, make them seem more ma magical than they really were. Early magicians, but the only difference was was that magicians revealed they were tricks. Um, Mayans try to control people, but uh, you know the, the priests try to control people. But here's the thing: I suspect that what happened was a very few basic initial uh, people try to come up with these theories, not just making them purely up, but also working on extrapolation based on what best available data they had at the time. Effectively, science fiction slash theories. You know, they, they postulated this, and a lot of it turned out to be true. Uh, you know, at least in relation to the uh, the physical effects, the spirits, not so much. But here's the thing: what if religion? Uh, was a was, what if religion and science? What if religion uh, was actually the evolution of the basic science fiction, and then it got corrupted along the way by people who um, who not only misinterpreted the uh, the ideas of what were happening or the stories that were coming out, but also decided, hey, wait a minute, if I claim that I'm talking to one of these super beings or you know or to the cause of these uh, of these things, uh, I can imply that I actually have a cause on natural phenomena and make myself seem more powerful than I really am, you know, and get whatever I want. I mean, like this, you know. Hence the first, uh, hence the first uh, appeal to authority and manipulation of people based on emotion uh, came out. Um, you know, uh, thus hampering the logic centers. And this is where the problem comes in. You see, the thing is, I don't think religion is the root of all evil. What I think happened was that religion was an attempt, a very beginning attempt at what science is doing now and what science fiction is also doing in terms of extrapolation. Science fiction is useful for two reasons. One of which, if the person who's writing the science fiction is knowledgeable in science and is, uh, you know, is good at their mathematics extrapolation, they will more than likely be able to make quite a few very good predictions based on the knowledge of their science available and help people uh, you know, prepare and avoid technological culture shock as technology rapidly advances and as, as new uh, scientific discoveries are constantly made. The problem is um, science fiction is about now. I've uh, heard a lot of people say like, oh, something, you know, science fiction is not worth reading because, you know, keep your head in the real world. Actually, my grandfather, who's a retired physicist, is one of those people. <laughs> but, you know, both my father and I, um, you know, I'm a bachelor of science student chemistry major. My father's an engineering technologist. Uh, we, we both agree uh, that science fiction is useful for trying to extrapolate further ahead. We just have to be uh, beware, you know, to avoid uh, you know, we just have to be aware, you know, that it has to be grounded in science and uh, remember to take it with a grain of salt until more evidence actually shows itself. But here's the thing. I suspect that religion uh, was like, was a proto-science. It was a proto-scientific attempt, which failed, um, you know, in some, you know, but here's the problem. I suspect that what's happening, and I think that this is still happening in our society today, um, is that um, people, uh, you know, people, uh, we, you know, religion and now science are now the, you know, and technology and science fiction. Uh, we're all very effective tools at trying to progress the human, uh, the human endeavor towards better understanding our universe and better uh, figuring out how to improve our lives. What unfortunately happened with that is that um, certain authorities in power um, later became uh, later um, seized control of these uh, particular ideas or what have you and said that's it. There's nothing more to it than that, and that's the absolute truth. Um, prominent examples of this: religion today, and also the skeptical organizations, um, Committee for Skeptical Inquiry for one. The Skeptic Society, not so much. I trust Michael Shermer better, but um, you know, there's there's a lot of um, 
uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, uh, misinterpretation and uh, much like I said before about critical thinking arguments, uh, this sort of critical thinking fallacy type thing has um, has um, has uh, taken control. And the very simple reason for this is that um, it's a genuine misinterpretation on their part. They uh, they're they're genuinely afraid. They genuinely want control and to make their lives seem like okay, we've got it all. We've you know we've solved the problems. We're you know we're at we're at the absolute end. But the truth is there is no absolute end. Science is ever advancing, and a lot of areas which may seem uh, pseudoscientific now. Or, or, you know, well, maybe not necessarily pseudoscientific. I draw the line. Let me, let me rephrase that. Certain areas which seem fringe now, and the reason I say uh, uh, fringe is because parapsychology is bordering between those two. Uh, you know, uh, it's on the cusp between fringe and pseudoscience. Um, the, best, the best level at work is fringe science. The worst level work is pseudoscience. That's what I would say, is that, you know, it's, 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 on, a, it's on a border between the two. But I still only look at the best work anyway. Um, to quote Marcelo Truzzi, we still debunk based on a we debunk something based on uh, uh, something based on its str strongest arguments, not on its weakest, which would be a straw man attack. But anyway, I digress. The bottom line is those that um, is that science fiction. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily believe that extraterrestrials uh, visited Earth. I believe that the and you know and a lot of people don't necessarily haven't even heard about these things or even reject uh, a large chunk of these uh, designs and the like as possibly being out of hand. Um, I'll tell you something. The original Mahabharat and various other um, legends in India actually described flying machines. No joke, they actually described flying flying chariots, as they were called. And a lot of the actual designs that were drawn at the time resemble stuff that's closely related to airplanes now. Um, for uh, another thing that was found in ancient Egypt was a model that looked re um, that was uh, originally filed by archaeologists as a model bird at the time because they didn't know what to make of it. It's now uh, by some been recently reclassified as a model airplane. Uh, that was actually back during the uh, 1912, after the airplanes became wi uh, widespread. So here's the thing about this. I suspect that the, uh, the ancient Egyptians and the ancient peoples were very, very effective and astute uh, about their science with just lack of technology. I suspect that scientific endeavor has been going on for a lot longer than we originally anticipated, and that you know if religion hadn't corrupted it, we would be a lot farther along than we are now. You know, um, I suspect that they did design probably model airplanes and the like long before we even discovered it now, just purely through extrapolation. They figured the birds can do it, so can we. You know, they probably designed something that, you know, uh, you know, that might have looked like a modern airplane that would have been aerodynamically sound, just from very, very basic uh, mathematics and observation. You know, this is what science is, and science fiction would be the extrapolation, i.e. these models from it, and these storylines. Like, this is not, you know, you know, this is not that far-fetched to suspect that they were able to, you know, it, that it wasn't just legends of gods or, or religious superstition, that it may have actually been legitimate science fiction extrapolated from uh, real observation, and that it just got corrupted along the way and became religious traditional uh, in the process. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Um, read science fiction. It'll help you prepare you for future technological culture shock, and it's a good light read. And uh, stay focused on science, because without it, you have no understanding of the world. That's just my idea. Toodles!